Welcome! Today I'll show you how to create a continuous integration Azure pipeline to automatically build and test all changes to your GitHub repository. You will learn how to enable continuous integration, also known as CI, with Azure pipelines, what is a YAML-based pipeline and why use it, how to create a pipeline that runs on any change to your GitHub repository, how to diagnose and fix issues detected by the pipeline, and how to report the status of the pipeline on GitHub. Before diving into how to create a pipeline, it is good to understand what's the typical sequence of steps in Azure Pipelines and how it enables continuous integration scenarios. So it all starts with the software developer who has some code ready to go in his box and it's ready to just push that code via Git into his remote uh, GitHub repository. So the push happens either directly or via pull request. And at that point, GitHub has already been configured to talk to Azure Pipelines to notify it that such an event has happened. So GitHub just goes ahead and notifies uh, your project in Azure Pipelines. So a push happened, let's say, in master branch. And at that point, Azure Pipelines uh, will read or will uh, evaluate uh, what we call the pipeline definition, which is a YAML file uh, that's stored in, in actually in your GitHub repository too. And so Azure Pipelines will read it and that will tell it uh, what are all the steps uh, to execute for this pipeline and also uh, where to execute the pipeline and any kind of constraints and any other sort of configurations that are uh, related to the execution of the pipeline. So once it's, it reads that file, it will go ahead and queue a, what we call a run, uh, uh, which is a series of tasks to execute. It will queue this run in uh, what we call an agent pool. So the agent pool is a series of a bunch of uh, machines that are uh, ready to receive the requests uh, that are coming from Azure Pipelines. So this agent pool uh, can be a series of, let's say, VMs, virtual machines. It could also be physical machines, just normal physical boxes connected to Azure Pipelines. Or they could be also Docker containers. The most common way to do the things these days is via virtual machines. Uh, but a more interesting way to do this is via containers, and we will see that in the video in, in a few moments. Now, these machines could be either hosted uh, by Microsoft in the, in the Azure DevOps uh, product, or they could be self-hosted. So if you don't want to really worry too much about how to prepare the, these machines and how to connect them to Azure Pipelines uh, so that they can um, execute your pipeline, so you would just go with Microsoft uh, hosted, um, uh, in this case, they are VMs. And so I think for public projects, you will get uh, up to 10 concurrent uh, uh, pipelines that can run simultaneously. And, um, uh, but, uh, of course, I mean, it, it's easy to, to just use those, but it has its own restrictions. Like, you don't have any control on the software that goes into those machines and or the spec of the machines themselves. So, depending on what you want to do, they may or may not be as convenient for you. The other option, self-hosted, um, has the benefit of, like, you can prepare the entire machine uh, by yourself with the exact specs that you need. Uh, but, of course, it's, a, it's an ongoing maintenance task uh, for these machines. So it's up to you what you want to use. We will be using Microsoft Hosted in, in this video. Now, these machines can also be configured uh, to use uh, either uh, Linux, Windows, or the uh, or Mac OS as the operating system. So it really depends on what you want to uh, do in the pipeline. Like if you need to, let's say you want to build a, a microservice, um, uh, it, it usually can run just fine on Linux. So you will pick the Linux OS or a Linux VM. Uh, but if you want to do things like using, let's say, .NET Framework, or you want to build a UWP Universal Windows Platform projects, uh, you may need to go uh, with Windows-based VMs. And if you want to build something for iOS, so most likely you have to go for a Mac uh, OS uh, agent. Then, um, after that happened, uh, an, agent, an agent will be selected from this pool, and the agent will just go ahead and pull the source, the source code that you have on, on GitHub. It will be pulled into that machine, and the series of tasks that are configured in your pipeline will execute. Okay, so one of the typical, uh, more, most basic tasks is just the build step, where we build this code just as you would have built it in your box. Let's say in the .NET case, .NET build. In this case, the agent will do that for you. We'll just build the code um, automatically. 
And once it's built, it can do other things like, let's say, run the tests, right? You have, like .NET test or any other kind of test runner that you have configured. It can go ahead and run all these tests for you. And finally, it will publish results um, into um, uh, the Azure Pipelines uh, UI. And it can also um, send all sorts of notifications uh, like emails if you want to know what happened uh, with the pipeline. So this is kind of the overall uh, flow on Azure Pipelines. It will vary uh, a lot, especially in terms of the tasks that execute, depending on what you have configured in your, in your YAML pipeline. And of course, there's another side of this, which is the, uh, the deployment story, continuous deployment, which we will not cover yet in this video. Now, here for a few things that we will be using in this tutorial. First, a couple of .NET Core projects already published in a GitHub repository. Second, Git, which we will use to manage changes to the repository. Third, the .NET Core 3.0 SDK, which we will need to build and test the code locally. And finally, Visual Studio Code, which we will use as our code editor. You could, of course, use any other code editor that works best for you. To illustrate how to enable continuous integration with Azure Pipelines, we're going to use the Hello Pipelines uh, repository that I have already published into GitHub. This repository has just a couple of very simple .NET Core 3.0 projects. The first one is a Web API, and this one is very similar to the one that you will get if you just do .NET New uh, Web API via the .NET Core CLI. And the main thing about this project is going to be the controller that we have here, the Weather Forecast Controller which only has just one API here, get. What it does is just returns a, a, a list of, or a collection of, of weather forecasts. In each of these forecasts, it's going to have a date, a temperature, and a summary. And that summary is, is just a, a random string out of these strings that you can see at the top. The other project that we have here is a little uh, test project. This is an X unit project that just has one test class. And that test class just has one, one very simple test that is going to uh, invoke that API and is going to confirm that the expected number of days are being returned. So how do we enable an Azure pipeline for this uh, GitHub project? What you want to do is go to azure.microsoft.com slash services slash devops slash pipelines. And here, uh, depending on if you have already an Azure DevOps account or not, uh, you may want to click on Start Free with Pipelines or sign in to Azure DevOps. In this case, let's assume that we don't have an account yet, so we're starting brand new. So Start Free with Pipelines. Now we're going to authenticate. In this case, I'm going to use my Microsoft account. And here we're asked for a project name. So your project is the place that's going to host both uh, your pipelines and any other uh, Azure DevOps related uh, artifact that you want to use uh, across your software development lifecycle. So this project we're going to just call Hello Pipelines. And you can choose if you want to uh, make it private, meaning that only you and the people that you invite can see what's going on in this project, or public, meaning anybody can go ahead and see what's going on here. So since our repository is uh, public, uh, let's go ahead and just make it public too here. So I'll click Continue. And this is also going to create a, a, what they call an Azure DevOps organization, which is an Uber container of a, a bunch of potential projects that you can have in Azure DevOps. Now, as you can see, an organization has been created. It is called Julio C0382. And an Azure, um, uh, and a project has been created, Hello uh, Pipelines, over there. And so now we're presented with an interesting uh, choice, which is uh, where, uh, I mean, to choose where to get the code from. And uh, at the same time, we're presented with um, the option of using either JAML-based pipelines or using the classic editor to create um, the pipeline. Okay, so YAML, by the way, stands for yet another markup language. That's an acronym, and it's not nothing more than a human-friendly data serialization standard for all programming languages. These days, the recommended approach is to just go for the YAML-based pipeline, but why would you want to use this as opposed to the classic editor? Now, the classic editor, uh, which is kind of legacy at this point, will allow you to do to use uh, more of a 
a UI, UI friendly approach, just drag and drop tasks and do a bunch of things visually uh, in, a, in this designer to create your pipeline. But the main pitfall uh, of that classic de designer is that the, the pipeline definition itself is not checked in alongside uh, your code. Right? And the main problem with this, which is not evident as, as you're starting with this, but after a while, uh, months from, from, from now, when you want to go back and, uh, and build again some code, some old code that you need to build again with the same pipeline that you're using today, in many cases, you just can't. Why? And because the pipeline has evolved in a separate way from, separate way from, your, uh, from your code. Right. So in the past, you may have had uh, some other projects or some other uh, binaries or test code or artifacts, some other things that today are not there and that the pipeline is not honoring anymore. So that disconnect makes the classic editor and the pipelines created by the classic editor uh, not ideal for a long term uh, project. So. Uh, overall, I'll, I'll strongly recommend uh, using the YAML based pipeline. And the other thing, of course, is that uh, uh, there are new features, new Azure Pipelines features that are already being introduced into the YAML based pipelines, like uh, deployment, um, deployment jobs, uh, cron based jobs, uh, scale jobs, and um, probably some other things. And uh, those things are just not available in the classic editor. So even if it takes a, a little bit to a little bit more to learn uh, the YAML based pipelines, I would strongly recommend that uh, you go uh, for this one. All right. Now, at the time where we are uh, recording this, there's a feature that we want to use and it's not yet uh, available uh, broadly. So we have to enable it explicitly. So to do that, I'm going to go here to my profile and click dot, 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 preview features. And it's called multi-stage pipelines. All right. Now, where's my code? Where my code is in uh, GitHub. So I'll click GitHub. And now at this point, uh, you may be prompted to authenticate to GitHub. And in my case, it's not prompting me because it already did it and just remember it. And so uh, I'll click on Hello Pipelines. And now we're taking into GitHub. Why? It, this is because uh, uh, GitHub is uh, is asking us uh, for permission to let Azure DevOps uh, get access to the code. So pretty much Azure DevOps wants to get notice of uh, any time that some code is pushed into GitHub. So for that, we need to install this, well, what they call, an, um, uh, uh, well, the Azure Pipelines application uh, into GitHub. And they will grant access to these permissions that we see here. And so we have to say yes. And I uh, will authenticate here. Okay, after the decade again with the Microsoft account. And so this sets up the connection, you know, between uh, GitHub and Azure Pipelines. So Azure Pipelines will now, from now on, has access to what's in your GitHub repository. Now at this point, we're presented with a bunch of uh, options uh, in terms of a, a template to initialize your YAML file. Uh, you could use uh, or choose among a series of templates that are available depending on what kind of framework, task, uh, or build tool or test tool, uh, whatever you, you want to, to do. There's a bunch of templates for, for you. Uh, but in our case, we'll just keep it simple, go step by step. So we'll go for a starter, starter pipeline. Here we are. So an initial pipeline, very simple pipeline has been generated for us. So let's start exploring what's going on here. I'm going to collapse this section here to have more space. And let's start looking at this. The first thing that I'll recommend you is to actually go to this uh, link over here, aka.ms slash YAML, which I think I have already opened somewhere here, right here. Um, so this page is super useful because this describes the entire YAML uh, schema reference. So here you can tell exactly how to structure your YAML file, how the pipelines are defined by this YAML file conventions, the basics, and a bunch of samples uh, so that you can get to know how to actually build these pipelines. And there's also a description of all the tasks that are available and, uh, and a bunch of concepts and things. So super useful page. You should keep this handy whenever you're dealing with a YAML-based pipeline. So now back to, to here. Um, one more thing about YAML pipeline, by the way, is that this is uh, enforcing what we call as a configuration as code, which is this, this uh, very nice practice of storing your pipeline alongside the, the repository. 
uh, of, alongside the code in the repository. So this is great because from here on you will know exactly what's going on uh, with the changes to the pipeline um, as people is making changes them uh, while well, pushing them to the GitHub uh, repository. And again, this is that would not be available with uh, the classic uh, the classic pipeline editor. So keep in mind configuration as code, great stuff. Um, First thing here, the trigger. The trigger is what defines when this pipeline is going to get uh, kicked off. So what it is saying right now is that anytime something is pushed or merged into the master branch, this pipeline has to get kicked off. And this you can change. It could be any of the branches that you have available in your repository. And there's also some other options if you want to limit uh, exactly which paths within your branch uh, you want to use to trigger uh, to trigger uh, a pipeline run. Now, uh, there are other options uh, available also, like uh, you could go, no, uh, this, is, this is called a CI based trigger, but you could create a pull request based trigger where uh, the pipeline will kick off whenever a new pull request, let's say in GitHub, uh, is created, right? So that's another way to, to run your pipeline. The other way is a schedule type pipeline. So you can say, well, every every hour, go ahead and kick off the pipeline or every night or every morning or once a week, stuff like that. That's also available. Next is the, uh, the pool. So we talked about um, virtual machine pools uh, or agent pools uh, uh, before. And so here's where you define what kind of uh, machine you want to use. So by choosing a VM image, you're telling uh, Azure Pipelines uh, that um, the, the first thing is that you actually want to use the, the Microsoft hosted, uh, a Microsoft hosted uh, virtual machine. And second, in this case, by saying Ubuntu, you're saying, well, I want to use a Linux-based machine. So it will really depend on what you want to do. You could do Ubuntu latest. Uh, you could also do um, Windows latest if you want to use a Windows virtual machine. Or you could do, I think it's a Mac OS latest if you want to build in a, in a Mac OS uh, device. So again, it depends on what you want to do. Okay, and there's also some other, uh, you can also pick a specific versions of this uh, image. You don't have to use latest. And again, if you want to know exactly what's available, uh, go back to that uh, to that YAML schema reference page. And somewhere in here, you're going to find all the options uh, of virtual machines available for you. And so like I said, we're going to use a hosted image here. We're not going to be managing our own virtual machine. Now, one thing that, that uh, I like to recommend here is to not um, run the pipeline directly into the virtual machine. Why? Because usually you don't know exactly what's going on uh, in that virtual machine. Yeah, you don't know. Uh, usually these, these machines have uh, tons and tons and tons of tools and frameworks and compilers and test runners and artifacts and all sorts of things installed on them. And so for the very specific project that, that you want to that you want to uh, go continuous integration across, uh, you may not need all those dozens and dozens and dozens of, of things that could have unintended consequences in, within your pipeline. So one thing that you can do to prevent having to use all that is just use a container. So by using a container, you can say, okay, so you're going to build, uh, sorry, you're going to run my pipeline um, specifically within this container that I am specifying. So for instance, in this case, we, we know that we are building and we are testing um, .NET Core 3.0 uh, set of projects. So for instance, in that case, what we can do, and I already pulled this up, uh, is go and find the .NET Core SDK Docker image, which is right here, I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to say, hey, when you run the pipeline, um, don't just run the pipeline directly in the virtual machine. First, go ahead and pull the .NET Core 3.0 SDK uh, container, container image, run it. And within that container, go ahead and run my pipeline. So that makes sure that only the things that you need uh, for your pipeline will, will be used across the pipeline. In this case, the .NET Core SDK is all we need for us. So we don't need all the other tooling that's available there. So, and in fact, if I it just picked, uh, I didn't use the container, I just go with the Ubuntu latest virtual machine. That image does not have the .NET Core 3.0 SDK. It has a previous version as of the time of this recording. So I will have to add an additional task in this pipeline to make sure that I actually get the .NET Core 3.0 SDK. So containers, great stuff. Um, may add some seconds to your pipeline, but it's totally uh, worth it. Now, going to steps, here's where you actually declare uh, what are the actions uh, on the steps that you want to execute. 
So for an example, this is this is giving us a couple of scripts, um, but um, we're definitely just removing them. And then um, what we want to do is to uh, add our steps. So there's two ways to add steps. The first way is by using just the um, just typing them, and we can use some intelligence here. So for instance, the first task that we want to uh, use here is uh, well, it's it is a task, right? So and this task is going to be the .NET Core CLI two, and uh, we're going to need some inputs. Sorry, inputs. And what we want there is uh, it's just one command, and that command is called build. So the way that the projects are set up, we just have to do .NET build, and it will go ahead and build all the projects. And that's, that's all we need to do, and that is the setup for this task. But now you, you may say, well, uh, I don't want to be typing all this stuff all the time. I have no idea what to put here. So again, uh, keep in mind that you can always go back to the YAML schema, and this will have the definition of all the tasks and samples and all these things, right? So you're not alone there. But if you really don't want to just type this stuff, there's this thing called uh, the assistant on the right side. You just have to click in there. And you're, this is going to open up a list of uh, all the, the tasks available in uh, Azure Pipelines. And you just have to select the one that you care about. And this is going to bring a bunch of options so that you don't have to type them, but you actually want to select them uh, over here. So in this case, what we want to do is to use the, let's say, the, the test command, because we want to build the code and then test the code, right? And what's the path to the project? In this case, we're just going to use a mini-match expression. Say we want to uh, scan uh, all the directories um, in the source and find anything that contains tests uh, in the name of, uh, of, of the project, csproc. So anything that has tests in the project name, uh, we will be picking across all the, the repository. And also, uh, let's publish those test results and code coverage is available into uh, the Azure Pipelines uh, store. So I click Add, and as you can see, that adds immediately the task right here. So you can see, so either you type it or you can pick it from here. Uh, it's not as fantastic as the old uh, designer, but it's a, it's a very handy tool and it lets us build beautiful YAML pipelines. So now the pipeline is pretty much ready to go. And what I'm going to do is just hit uh, save and run. And at this point, you're prompted with the option of either committing this directly to the master branch, uh, or you can create a new branch uh, for this commit. And you can potentially even create a pull request if you want to get others' uh, reviews and approvals on that. To keep these things simple in this video, we'll just go ahead and commit directly to the master branch. So save and run. So this is now created a pipeline. So again, remember, so the Azure Pipelines YAML is checked in into your repository. So it will live and move forward as your as your repository moves forward. So here we are in the in the pipelines um, monitoring page. So now you're looking at uh, one specific run and um, it's telling you the duration and it's right now in the queued state and it just changed it to running. So your pipeline is now uh, running. And if you want to know uh, what exactly is going on with that pipeline, you can always just click on the job. And this will open up uh, this uh, UI here. And we can walk through what's going on there first. What it's doing is, of course, uh, pulling that uh, uh, Docker container image, the .NET Core 3.0 SDK, uh, like we said, because it is it inside this container that all the pipeline is going to execute. So now we're checking out the code. So it's pulling the code from GitHub into this, uh, this container. And next, it will go ahead and it will build the code, right? So just .NET build with that task that we added, building the code. And I think something happened while building the code. So let's see. Let's wait for the file. Okay, so pipeline has finished. So let's scroll up a little bit and see what we can find. So we have an error actually in the build step. In the Word of Vortex controller, there's an error. Cannot convert from method group to int. All right. So there's something going on here. So the best thing that we can do, I think, is to actually uh, try to reproduce this thing locally and see what happens. So we'll go back to the GitHub repository. I'll get the clone URL. And now I'll go to my box here. And I'll just do clone. 
right? So let's go to Hello Pipelines and let's open VS Code to see what's going on here. All right, here we are. Let's close this welcome screen and let's look again. We were looking at the controllers, weather forecast controller file line 34. All right, let's go there. Web API controllers, weather forecast controller. Sure, let's restore Nugget packages. And let's see uh, line 34. Indeed, there's something going on here. And yeah, so the problem here is that we're trying to use account uh, property, which does not really exist because summaries is an array. Arrays don't have account property. We could use the count method if we're using uh, a link here, uh, but uh, probably it's more efficient to just use length, which is a Actual, an actual property is already computed, so it's more efficient than using the commenter. So let's do that. So this should fix it, uh, but make sure let's make sure it, it's actually fixed. Let's do uh, run build task. This is going to do .NET build for both projects. And if this is fixed, uh, yes, indeed, build succeeded. So let's commit this. Uh, use length instead of count in get. All right, so let's do that. All right, it's right there. Now let's uh, open another terminal and let's do git push origin master. All right, so this should fix the issue. Let's go back to Azure Pipelines and as you can see, just by doing that git push, another uh, uh, build uh, has uh, kicked in. So this is what we call continuous integration. So any change that's made to our, our master branch is being immediately uh, exercised by the by Azure Pipeline, by the continuous integration pipeline. And so as you can see, we have the pipeline now running. And so uh, let's see if we can get a successful uh, uh, run this time. All right, so the pipeline has completed and um, indeed the job has failed. And the one thing that I noticed uh, besides the fact that this has failed is that zero test has passed. So first, well, let's first review what, what failed here. So it's saying that, um, yes. So the .NET test step failed it's saying that we have an a set equals failure, so that something failed in the test, expecting seven, actual five. And if we go back to the to the run and we click on this, this section where it says test zero pass, we can click there. And this actually gives us an overall view of all the tests that failed in this run. And if you click in the failed test, it will give you a very nice uh, view of uh, what happened. So like we saw in the in the error uh, before, um, there's a place where we're asserting that we would expect seven and we're getting five. And, in, and that's in the only test that we have. So let's go back to the test and see what's going on. So let's see. Uh, our test over here, okay. So this test will go ahead, create a controller, passing a stop of the of the logger that it needs. It, ex it is expecting to receive seven days, calls get, and um, we are not getting seven days. Let's see whether Forecast controller. Aha. Uh -huh. So it is getting a range of five days or actually, not seven days. So that's the, the issue. So at this point to fix this, so either the test is wrong or our implementation of the method is wrong. So let's assume that the test is actually right. And let's say, well, actually, let's return the seven days that the test is expecting. So let's see if the test is now happy with this. So let's um, let's run the let's run all the tests. Expand this a little bit. See what we get. Uh huh. One out of one test pass. So this fixes it. So let's go back here and say fix uh, slash get to return expected number of days. So yes, back to the terminal and let's just do git push or master. 
and back to pipelines, let's go here, and again, just like magic, uh, the pipeline just runs immediately. So let's click here. This will go ahead and run the pipeline again. And if we're lucky, this time uh, we'll get a successful um, run. And so indeed, this time the job succeeded. We have a 100% um, pass rate. So this means that uh, we're good and we can actually click there and we will see all tests are good. There's no failures here. And so everything's great. So the pipeline is, is ready. Now, one more thing that we may want to do, uh, just to reflect the fact that we have a pipeline uh, in our GitHub repository, is to add a status batch uh, to the GitHub page. So that batch we can show right here in this page. And to enable that, let's go back to the Hello Pipelines page. And if you just click in this dot, 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 click status batch, you can click on the sample markdown here. I'll just copy it and then go back to here. Let's code. Let's open our readme file. By the way, you should always have a readme file. That's super useful for future readers of your repo. And just paste that markdown. I'll hit save and I'll say add status batch. All right. And let's push this. Okay. And by doing that, we now go to GitHub and we refresh this page. We'll see a status batch right here. So anybody that just comes to this repository wants to know what's the status of this code, it will know that, that the status is, well, in this case, succeeded. It would say failed if the last build of this failed. And if you click there, if you click there, you will see the status of the latest uh, build uh, associated to this repository. So there you go. Continuous integration for your GitHub repository enabled by Azure Pipelines. If this video was useful, please consider hitting the like button. Don't forget to hit subscribe and the notification bell to know right away when I publish new videos. Also, please leave me a comment below with any thoughts about this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.